Hello everyone, so glad to get to teach you today. I wish I could see you in person though. We've been talking about the resurrection eggs and I'm excited to get to tell you about the next three in our lesson today. Last week we saw how Jesus came into Jerusalem a week before his death, riding on a donkey like a king coming in peace. We found a coin that reminded us of the betrayal of Judas and a cup that reminded us of the love and obedience of Jesus. Jesus chose to come and die for us because he loved us. He had the same free will that you and I do, and he could have, he could have said no. It was never even a question for him. Jesus loved us, and he was willing to do anything to save us. But that doesn't mean it was easy for him. Our first egg today has a pair of praying hands. Jesus went to a garden to pray right before his betrayal. The way Jesus prayed that night shows us how fearful Jesus was right as everything was about to happen. Let's read Mark 14, 32 through 42. Then they came to a place which was named Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit here while I pray. And he took Peter, James, and John with him, and he began to be troubled and deeply distressed. Then he said to them, My soul is exceedingly sorrowful, even to death. Stay here and watch. He went a little farther and fell on the ground and prayed that if it were possible, the hour might pass from him. And he said, Abba, Father, all things are possible with you. Take this cup away from me. Nevertheless, not what I will, but what you will. Then he came and found them sleeping and said to Peter, Simon, are you sleeping? Could you not watch one hour? Watch and pray, lest you enter into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Again, he went away and prayed and spoke the same words. And when he returned, he found them asleep again, for their eyes were heavy, and they did not know what to answer him. Then he came the third time and said to them, Are you still sleeping and resting? It is enough. The hour has come. Behold, the Son of Man is being betrayed into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. Jesus was overwhelmed with emotion. He knew what he had to do to save us, and he knew how brutal it would be. His disciples had no clue what he was about to face, and they could not imagine how he felt. Even as he cried and prayed his heart out, they were sleeping, completely unaware of what was about to go down. If there was another way to save us, Jesus would gladly have taken it. He knew only our only hope meant suffering, and he was willing to suffer. Our second egg contains a small whip. It's a reminder of just how bad things got for Jesus. Let's read Luke 22, 63 through 65. Now the men who held Jesus mocked him and beat him, and having blindfolded him, they struck him on the face and asked him, saying, Prophesy, who is the one who struck you? And many other things they blasphemously spoke against him. Jesus was beaten with fists and with a whip. He had his clothes stripped away. He had a crown of thorns placed on his head. All night and all day, the men who guarded Jesus mocked him and laughed at him. They made fun of him for saying he was the king of the Jews and the Messiah. Jesus was humiliated and shamed publicly, but the greatest pain he felt didn't come from a whip or an unbelieving guard. It came from one of his own friends. The third egg today has a rooster in it. I, I think many of you already know this story. Let's read Matthew 26, 69 through 75. Now Peter sat outside in the courtyard and a servant girl came to him saying, you also were with Jesus of Galilee. But he denied it before them all saying, I do not know what you are saying. And when he had gone out to the gateway, Another girl saw him and said to those who were with him, This fellow also was with Jesus of Nazareth. But again he denied with an oath, I do not know the man. And a little later those who stood by came up and said to Peter, Surely you also are one of them, for your speech betrays you. Then he said, Then he began to curse and swear, saying, I do not know this man. Immediately a rooster crowed. And Peter remembered the word of Jesus, who had said to him, Before the rooster crows, you will deny me three times. 
So he went out and he wept bitterly. Before the garden, before Jesus' arrest, Peter vowed that he would never leave Jesus' side. But when Jesus was arrested, Peter feared for his life. He denied Jesus three times, just as Jesus predicted. He turned his back on Jesus, even as Jesus was preparing to die for him. Jesus was willing to be beaten, mocked, ridiculed, and made fun of for our sake. He never wavered, never ran and hid, never backed down. He did what was necessary because he loves us. How sad that so many believers are so ashamed of the Savior who was unashamed of them. So many of us hide our faith. We live just as sinfully as our friends when we're not at church. We never share what we believe with anyone. Jesus was unashamed of us. We should be unashamed of him. We should be Christians all the time. We need to be willing to live our faith every day, not just on Sundays. It's not easy to be a Christian in a non-Christian world. We all want to fit in. We don't want our friends to laugh at us or tease us about anything, much less our faith. It's so much easier to, to stay silent, to follow the crowd and to blend in. We weren't saved so we could blend in. We were saved so we could carry the message of Easter to the world. The friends whose acceptance you desire, the ones you're afraid will mock you, Jesus loves them too. Did you know that? He wants them to know that he can save them from their sins. And how can Jesus save them if we're afraid to live for Jesus? They need to know about him. We need to tell them. This week, I want to challenge you to think of ways that you can live out your faith when you go back to school. Be willing to stand out. Be willing to be made fun of. Be willing to be different just so that you can reach these people for Jesus. When someone asks you about your faith, don't be afraid to share it with them. Tell them you love Jesus and invite them to come to church with you. Jesus was unashamed for you. Do not be ashamed to say that you love him. Let's take a minute and pray. Father, thank you that you were unashamed of us. Thank you that you died on the cross. Thank you for saving us from our sins. Thank you that you gave us this hope of heaven. Please give us boldness and help us to be able to tell our friends about you, to not be afraid that they might mock us or make fun of us, but to love them enough to share your gospel message with them. We love you and we thank you for all of your blessings. Amen. All right, let's do our review game. The first question is this. The whip in the resurrection egg reminds us of the whipped peanut butter in a chocolate egg. True or false? What do you think? That's right, it's false. The praying hands remind us of Jesus' prayers in the garden. True or false? Yep, you got it again. True. The rooster reminds us that eggs come from chickens. True or false? False. The rooster reminds us of how G Peter denied Jesus. It is very easy to share your faith when your friends might make fun of you. True or false? That's right. It's false. It's not, it's not easy at all. And the last question, we should be unashamed of Jesus and remember all the shame he suffered for us. True or false? That one's true. Good job. Now, I think this is the last week for your memory verse, so say it with me one more time. 2 Corinthians 5.17 Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Thank you.